Hi, I'm Christina and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So last week I read a science fiction book, so I'm going to switch up my genres and this week I'm going to choose a contemporary. So I've chosen to read The Phone Box at the Edge of the World by Laura Amay Messina. So this book has been translated from the Italian and it has been inspired by a true story and I just really love the premise of this one. So there is a phone box in this old man's garden where people go to talk to their loved ones who have passed away and their voices carry on the wind out across the ocean. And I just thought that sounded like such a lovely concept. It really kind of captivated me as soon as I heard what it was about. So we follow the main character of Yui, who is a woman that has lost both her mother and her daughter in a tsunami. And she's understandably really, really struggling with this grief. And she is a radio presenter by career. And one day on her radio show, one of the listeners rings in and they're talking about grief and about how you can overcome grief. And he mentions this place and she is obviously very intrigued. So she takes a few days off work and it's the first time she's taken any time off work since her mum and her daughter passed away. And she goes on this pilgrimage to see this phone box. And when we get to the phone box, she meets this man and they kind of develop a friendship. And he has also lost somebody that he's loved. He's lost his wife. So it's really, really good. I've read about half of this so far. I've read 160 pages and I read, so there we are. I read that in one sitting and honestly, I, I'm really, really enjoying it. It is really, really lovely and it's written really well and it's such a quick read as well. The, the chapters are quite short, the writing's quite large and it's written in a really interesting format too. So you have the chapters of the story as it's going along and then you also have little lists that are included, just lists of different things like lists of songs and lists of items and it's a really nice way to kind of include this and like break it up. And yeah, I think it's a really interesting way to be written. And yeah, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying this one and I'm really looking forward to carrying on reading it. Hi, so I finished the phone box at the edge of the world and I read this book in just three sittings which is quite unlike me and I really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it four stars. It is such a lovely little book and it's unlike anything that I've read before. I was trying to think about what books would I compare this to and honestly I can't think of any. This is quite unique for me and I thought it was just really lovely, really sweet. It's really quite an uplifting book. It's a book about grief, obviously, but it's more of a book about love and about hope and about family. And I just really, really enjoyed it. There was a point in this where I welled up. So I do think it was quite an emotional read. And yeah, it was just so lovely. All the characters are really, really nice too. I really enjoyed seeing their relationships blossoming. It was really nice to see. And it's not just a story about romantic love, it's a story about familial love too. So obviously we see the love um, a parent has for their child and a child has for their parents. And it's just really, really sweet. And obviously with it being a phone box where people go to talk to their loved ones, we see lots of different characters who are grieving. And obviously grief takes many different forms. I think maybe every person grieves in a different way that is unique to them. And obviously everybody is grieving for a specific person and they have very unique relationships. So it's really interesting to see all of those different characters come together and just see little snippets of their lives. And I thought that was really, really great. And I also really enjoyed the format of it, the way it included all of those little lists, which was something I quite enjoyed. So you just see like lists of songs and then lists of a character's favourite phrases, lists of things that she's bought for her daughter, just little random lists that just kind of get like slipped in throughout the pages and it really adds a lot of, just it adds something to the story, I can't quite explain it and yeah it just feels really really nice to see these little extra bits of information that she wanted to put in the book, I thought it was a really nice touch. 
And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I definitely recommend it to you if it sounds like it's something that would be interesting to you. It's, yeah, as I would say previously, unique. I can't think of any other book that I could compare this one to. And I think that's, <laughs> that's a massive compliment actually to a book if it is something new to you. So yes, I thought this one was excellent. It's definitely the favourite book that I've read so far this month. But I've only read two this month. <laughs> But I think, yeah, I think it's going to take something quite special to knock this one off the top spot for this month of May. So yes, really, really enjoyed that one. I definitely recommend that you read it. It's It was lovely. And everyone loves a lovely little book. So yeah, that was that one. So the next book I was planning to read was Oligarchy by Scarlett Thomas and this is a YA book about a young Russian girl who comes to England to study at a boarding school and then one of her new friends disappears. But I'm not really enjoying this one. So I've read about 30 pages so far and it is a very short book and I just don't like it at all. It is very heavy on teenage angst, which just feels so far removed to me now. It's been a long time since I was a teenager and it's just not something that I connect with anymore. And there's also a lot of discussion around eating disorders, which isn't something I really want to read about. And I do think that is definitely a trigger warning for this book, even in the early pages. And yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. I just wasn't enjoying it. And we were introduced to a lot of characters very quickly and I was just like who is that and I was like I, I actually I actually don't care <laughs> I don't care who that was so yeah there are so so many other books on my TBR that I really want to get to and yeah I'm definitely trying to be better at DNFing books normally I just keep reading it <laughs> and just see what happens but if I am not enjoying a book I am actively trying to put it down and not read it because life's too short and there's only so many books that you can read in your lifetime and this isn't going to be one that I read. So <laughs> I'm going to put this one down and choose the next book that I want to read. So I've just been to my local charity shops to have a look at the book selection. I haven't been since before the pandemic, so it's been a really, really long time. And it was so lovely to just have a little browse at all of the books. And the prices are so, so good. So in the cancer research shop, they are five for one pound. And in the other shop, Bernardo's, they were four for two pounds. So really amazing prices. There wasn't anything that I wanted to buy. There wasn't any books there that kind of grabbed my attention, but it was so, so lovely to go in and have a little look and you just never know what book you might find. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. So the next book I'm planning to read is Watch Her Fall by Erin Kelly. Now I first heard about this book from Eric whose channel I will link down below. He's great, you should definitely go and check him out. And I just thought it sounded so so good when you hold it in his April haul. It just sounded right up my street. So this is a psychological thriller and it has black swan vibes. So it's about elite ballet and it's set in London and I just thought it sounded so so intriguing. I don't think I've ever read a book about ballet so that will be an interesting theme for me. I used to do ballet when I was a child, I did it for a few years and I really enjoyed it and I think having that kind of theme of ballet will be something quite special, it's something I've not read about before so I'm looking forward to that and I love psychological thrillers. I haven't read a thriller for a while, about a month maybe, and the thrillers that I have read have been quite average, run of the mill for me. I haven't read a really, really good thriller this year. No, I haven't. I read some really good ones last year, um, but I haven't read a really, really great thriller, like a new favourite thriller so far this year. So it could be this one. 
and I'm going to buddy read this one with Kirsten over at Reading Nymph who I will link down below so you can go and check her out. It's going to be my first time having a buddy read with her and I'm really really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be so much fun and she has some great book recommendations. She really likes fantasy which is a genre that I don't read very much of so definitely go and check her out. And yeah I think it's going to be so much fun reading this with Kirsten and I'm really looking forward to reading it. It's meant to be dark so I'm looking forward to some very dark scenes and I hope there's going to be lots and lots of twists and turns. Hi, so I have an update on Watch Her Fall. I've read 150 pages of this so far and I'm about halfway through the book now and it actually has been a little bit slow for my liking. It hasn't really read as a thriller for a while but then saying that in the last few pages it has definitely cranked up a notch and it's definitely a thriller now. Something thrilling has happened for sure. So I definitely think it's going to get better going forward. We have had two different perspectives so far. So the first perspective is told from Ava's point of view and Ava is the main ballerina. She plays both the black swan and the white swan and she is also the daughter of the man who runs the entire ballet company. So he owns it, he's the choreographer, he's the director, he's everything. So she could say that she has a little bit of an advantage being the daughter of this man but she is also a world-class ballet dancer too. So she's a little bit kind of removed from all of the other dancers because of who she is of course. So we see the first kind of part of the book is told from Ava's point of view and then the second perspective that we see is Juliet and Juliet is the ballerina who is cast as the black swan for the very short period when the prince realises that he isn't actually with the white swan, he's with the black swan, her sister. So I think she dances on stage for something like 20 seconds but it is a moment, it's a great kind of part for a young ballerina and she is kind of the second swan, she plays the other black swan for those kind of moments on stage. So she's a really important character and then we see like the rest of the story from her point of view. So she has most of the story so far, Ava has the first chunk and then Juliet has the second chunk and one thing um, Kirsten and I were saying is ballet is very grueling, it is hard work, it really does give you an insight into the world of ballet at this kind of level, this really high class, top tier, world class level of ballet, it is, it's not just a job is it, it is a passion, it's, you dedicate your life to this. And that definitely comes across in the book and it's really interesting and it also kind of talks about the inherent competitiveness within the world of ballet and it also touches upon how that these dancers aren't necessarily treated very well in terms of they don't really um, learn anything else, they kind of come to this school when they're about 13 years old, some of them are coming from all over the world and they don't really teach them transferable skills, they aren't like carrying on their actual formal education, they don't really study for like GCSEs or A-levels or degrees or anything like that, they dedicate their entire life to ballet. So if something is to go wrong, if you know, if you get poorly or if you injure yourself, you don't really have anything to fall back on, this is, this is it, it's really all or nothing in this you dedicate everything to this and if something unfortunate happens that's kind of it and the way that they treat these girls afterwards is really really awful in this situation you just kind of get cast out and with a little bit of money like a few thousand pounds and that's it you have to leave and leave the entire world that you've known and everyone you've known and lived with and try and start over with basically no qualifications and no life experiences and you know no kind of job like anything behind you. So it really does touch on that as well. I don't know if that's kind of true in the actual ballet world but it's interesting that they've brought this into it. Like I say it wasn't really reading as a thriller, nothing like major was happening, we were just kind of learning about these girls and the situations that they found themselves in whilst they're with this ballet company. But no, like I say, in the last couple of pages something kind of big has happened that makes it a thriller. And yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I don't think I'm going to be giving it any higher than a free star at the moment. It's reading as a free star for me, unless something 
big happens to make me change my mind in the next kind of, you know, the next kind of chunk of it. So that's my update on that one. So I also thought I would mention the film that I watched last night, which was The Woman in the Window. It came out on Netflix just a couple of days ago, and I actually really enjoyed it. I read the book, The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn back in 2018 when it was first published, and I enjoyed it. It was one of those thrillers that I did like. It wasn't anything super special. I rated it three stars. I definitely enjoyed it. And I remembered a lot of what the twists were going to be, and I think it was adapted really, really well. So you have Amy Adams as her main character. You have Julianne Moore in there, Gary Oldman, lots of other really famous people. There's lots of famous faces in there. And I thought it was adapted really, really well. It stuck really true to the book. So if you enjoyed the book, I think you will enjoy the adaptation because it really has it all in there. It packs all of those things in there. And there were some things that are, you know, shocking as they were in the book and they do it really well in the film. It's portrayed really well in the film. I think everyone's acted really, really well in it. And I really liked it. I thought it was good. I actually think that the movie was better than the book because I remember thinking, yeah, the book was good. Three stars liked it was interested in the movie and I think the movie did it a little bit better honestly it was it was good um I thought it's definitely worth a watch so if you are in the uh kind of market for watching a new thriller I definitely recommend watching that one yeah it's definitely better than the book which is actually quite rare um if you don't know the story behind it it's about this woman who is obviously the woman in the window she lives in this large house and she's living there by herself and she isn't doing very well kind of like mentally she is on a lot of medication she hasn't really left the house for about 10 months she's got agoraphobia and she's uh, definitely got an alcohol problem she's mixing all of her medications with alcohol which she shouldn't do and she's kind of in she's in a bad place essentially and most of what she does is look out of the window at her neighbours and then she thinks that she sees a crime being committed and basically it all goes from there you meet some of um, the people who are her neighbours and it kind of becomes this big thing and yeah I thought it was a good one if you have read the book and you've seen the movie adaptation too let me know what you think down in the comments I'd love to talk to you about it so yeah I'd recommend it so I'm actually going to pick up my new glasses tonight I've had these ones for about 18 months now and you're meant to have your eyes tested about every two years but I need some new sunglasses for summer so my last sunglasses I got about seven years ago so the prescription is really really old and you know I can't even see in them so I was like I definitely need some new sunglasses for this summer so I might as well get actual glasses while I'm there too because you know it's buy one get one free at Specsavers so that's what I thought I would do and my eyesight has changed a little bit it's gone a little bit worse so yeah I'm looking forward to picking those up so the next time you'll see me I'll be wearing my brand new glasses which I think is really nice um so yeah and I also went to the zoo and um, and that was really really nice too I haven't been to the zoo in a few years now so I'll put some clips of the animals in because they're just really cute So I have my new glasses and I really like them. It's so great to be able to see everything again. They're just kind of rose gold and I like the little pattern at the top. So yes, and I will show you my sunglasses too. So they're Victor and Rolf. It's a really nice little case. And here we go, let me show you. So I haven't had sunglasses that I've been able to actually see <laughs> out of for quite a few years now. So this is really, really nice to be able to see again. And yeah, I think they're really nice. I really like the arm. It's just like a really lovely arm and they're quite big and they're quite, yeah, they're, they're perfect. I really like them. So yeah, we just need some sunshine now. So I can actually wear these. 
So yeah, I really, really like these. And I really like spec savers, you know, buy one, get one free. I think it's really, really good. So those are those ones. Let me put my actual glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Right, so there we are. I'm gonna talk about my book. So back to Watch Her Fall. I've now read three more chunks of this book over three days and it's definitely reading more like a thriller now. I'm enjoying it a lot more. So we've been introduced to a third perspective, a man called Roman. And he isn't actually anything to do with the ballet world at all. But obviously, I don't really want to say who he is or or anything because I don't want to ruin the plot for anyone. So I'm going to have to be a lot more vague going forwards now with this book. So yes, we have a third perspective. He's called Roman. And then we return back to Ava's perspective. And I like that one the most because for me, Ava is the most interesting character. She is the main ballerina and I just find her the most interesting to read about essentially. And at the start of her chapter, the first sentence, I was like, oh my goodness, I... Yeah, I mean, I can't say, but I was like, that's pretty good. I like where this is going. This is a good, this is good. And then we kind of continue on with the story and there is another massive twist. And I did not see this coming at all. And I really, really like it when a thriller can completely surprise me. You know, I, you often have like ideas of where you think it's going to go or what you think might happen. And then the thing that has happened, I was just like, I, I never thought that was going to happen. Not in a month of Sundays did I think that that is where this story was going to go. So I really like that. I really like it when a thriller can genuinely surprise me and I'm like, yes, I did not predict that coming at all. So that's really good. I do like that aspect of it. So then we're introduced to a fourth perspective who is Nicky and he is Ava's father. He is the man who owns the ballet company. He's the main choreographer, the director, the producer. So it's actually really interesting to see the story from his point of view. I really like that. I didn't think we were going to get any more perspectives actually. I That's one thing with this book. I was actually expecting the whole story to probably be from Ava's perspective and then maybe somebody else's perspective. But no, we've had quite a few now and I do like it. I do like all of this kind of different ways of seeing the story. So you see the story from one person's perspective and then the next chapter you have a new person's perspective. So you see the story again, but from their point of view and from their eyes. And it just kind of adds a few new layers to what is actually happening. And I really like that. It's happened a couple of times that you read it and you're like, okay, I know what's going on. And then you read the next book and you're like, oh, wow, okay, I, I didn't know that <laughs> that was part of that. So I do like that. And then we return back to Roman's perspective. So yeah, I like I say, I like all of these different perspectives. Earlier on in the book, I was like, oh, I just want to stick with Ava. She's the most interesting. And, you know, I don't know how all of these different characters, especially Roman, is going to tie in with everything. But they do. Everything is tying in very nicely. And the more that you get through it, the better it is. So I think the first part of it doesn't really read much as a thriller and it's a lot of setting the scene. And then once you hit the kind of halfway mark, things really do start like cranking up a notch and you are seeing some thriller aspects coming in. And like I say, there's been two big twists that I did not see coming, which is good. But I don't know if it's probably gonna be any more than a free star for me, but it's definitely, definitely gonna be a free star. So yes, I have now two more chunks left to read. And Kirsten and I decided to read that just over the one day on the Sunday. So we can start a new book on the Monday. So yeah, I'm just gonna read the last chunk and then I will update you on my final thoughts. Hi, so I have finished Watch Her Fall. We were introduced to one more perspective, Lizanne, who is another dancer. So there are five perspectives overall and I enjoyed it, but I'm going to give it three stars and it is a low three stars actually. I don't think this is going to be particularly memorable for me. It was a good book, I enjoyed my time with it, it was a fun read, but yeah, there's nothing more to say about that. I don't have any kind of emotional connection to the characters. Um, I thought the ending was, was very neat and it was very tidy and I don't know, it was, it was a little bit disappointing towards the end. So yeah, it's going to be a low three stars for me. If you do enjoy thrillers, if the idea of ballet being in a thriller kind of 
makes you sound interested in it, then yeah, definitely give it a go. But it's definitely not one of my favourites. I think there's a lot better thrillers out there. It was a good one. Like I say, enjoyed my time with it. But yeah, I don't think I'll be thinking much more about this book in the future. I think if you ask me in a couple of months, I won't be able to remember a lot of this. I probably won't remember the characters' names or anything. So yeah, it was decent, but I don't think it's anything special. So yeah, that was that one. I have obviously read two books in this vlog. I very much enjoyed the other one a lot more than this. So I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. So thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you liked it. And please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.